Everyone makes mistakes while bike touring. Whether this is your first ever trip or you're a bike nomad that's been on the road for years, there's always a chance that you could get caught out. In this video, we'll take a look at three mistakes that we made while cycling around Australia, and hopefully you won't have to learn the hard way like we did. Before we get into this video, here's the usual reminder that if you're into bike touring or bike packing, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. I don't think we've talked about it too much publicly, but we made a ton of mistakes on our big tour of Australia. Now, a lot of these mistakes are the same mistakes everyone makes. You know, like packing too much stuff and all those other mistakes that are super common when people are first starting out. We made all of them just like everyone else does. But today I thought I'd address a few of the mistakes that we made that I haven't really seen anyone else talking about, and they're pretty big. So I heard a phrase recently that I think really sums up this point well. Too much planning gets in the way of what might happen naturally. And that is definitely our experience. All of our most memorable bike touring experiences were the unexpected ones. We would be bumbling along with no idea where we were going to camp that night, and a friendly stranger would appear and offer us a bed for the night. Or we would stumble across the most amazing campsite completely by accident. Or we'd pop into a pub to shelter from the rain for a little bit, and next thing you know, we're camping in the beer garden. None of these things would have happened if we had something planned. Now, sometimes plans are important, if you're about to head to a really remote area, you should probably plan for water refills and maybe how much food you're going to carry with you. But there were times when we had everything planned out. Monday we'll go here, Tuesday we'll camp here, Wednesday we'll go there. And everything worked out just fine. But that's not much of an adventure. And right after making a point about the value of spontaneity, we're going to talk about an area where it really does pay to be organized. We haven't ever set a budget and kind of scoffed at the idea. We pictured some bike tourer sat in the tent every night filling in a spreadsheet or writing a list with a calculator in hand. The idea of setting a daily or weekly budget and keeping track of it just didn't seem very fun. That just seemed like a really rigid way to travel and completely removed from the spontaneous adventure that I just talked about. And that's fine if you're going away for a bikepacking weekender or a two week bike tour or basically a holiday. But if you've got a much longer extended tour in mind, then you should probably consider setting a budget. If we'd budgeted properly, then maybe we could have stayed on the road longer or maybe we wouldn't have had to stay here saving up for so long for the next adventure. And doing the maths on your spending can actually be really useful. Okay, let's say you've got $10,000 in savings for your trip, just to make the maths easy. And you set yourself a budget of $100 a week. That means you've got 100 weeks on the road. Now that's a really simplistic way of looking at it and obviously things happen. A mechanical you need to pay to get fixed or other unexpected expenses. And obviously that doesn't include flights or visas or any of that stuff. But you get the point. Budgeting is made super easy these days by the vast amount of apps that are out there. A lot of them are based around planning and they can even access your bank account to see how much money you have to work with. But I didn't want any of that stuff. All I wanted was a way to track what I'd spent and maybe a daily average for the trip so far. So I ended up installing an app called Travel Spend. This isn't an endorsement because I haven't actually used it yet, but it seems to have the features that I want and maybe it could work for you too. On our last tour, it got to the point where it felt like we were constantly rushing. It just felt like we could never really take our time, and oftentimes we left before really getting to enjoy a place. And I felt like it really affected the quality of the videos that I made. They could have been so much better if I'd taken my time when I was filming a location. Compose shots, set up tripods, really take the time to be creative with what I was doing, rather than just run and gun, get the shots and go. And this was for a few reasons. The first one ties into that planning point I made earlier. 
When you have a destination planned and you have a certain amount of Ks you need to do that day, that is always in the back of your mind. You might be wandering around a museum or something and you're constantly thinking, oh man, we better get moving soon, we've got another 70 Ks to do today. But if you don't have anywhere you need to be, then you can afford to take your time. Another issue was that in the mornings, we always set off far too late. Now, don't get me wrong. If you've got an awesome campsite and you just want to take it in before you set off, then don't rush that. But if you've got a big day to do that day, either because you've got a lot of Ks to ride or you've got a lot of stuff to see, then it really does pay to get an early start. Anyways, definitely do not rush anything. This is bike touring, not the rat race. Enjoy the ride. All right, guys, that's it. Those were the three big mistakes that we were guilty of on occasion. And I hope that you'll remember this video when you set off on that next tour. As usual, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Until next time, cheers.